Greetings everyone, um, welcome to another edition of a Laptop Gamer. Today I'm going to be looking at the uh, often underrated gem that is Brutal Legend. Now this was a game that was released originally um, on the consoles around 2009, late 2009, and it's taken this long to get to the PC. It was quite a surprise when uh, the developer Double Fine did announce this because I, I never thought this would see the light of day. Um, it's considered a bit of a rough diamond, but have any improvements been made for the PC aside from graphics? It's kind of notorious for being a game with almost out without any type of genre. Um, it's got RTS elements, it's got beat em up elements, it's got open world elements in it, and it's all put into a blender. So let's have a look at Brutal Legend for the PC. Brutal Legend revolves around the character of Eddie Riggs. Eddie is the music industry's top roadie who constantly dreams about the golden age of metal, having been stuck on the road with a god-awful pop metal act. During the performance, Eddie is injured, heroically saving one of the worthless musicians, and his blood fuses with the icon on his belt buckle, summoning Armageddon. This is the god of metal, who proceeds to remove the false metal band off of the stage by melting their faces off, and he whisks Eddie off to an unknown land where true metal has become manifest. From here, Eddie goes on an adventure to bring balance back to this realm, from the clutches of the wonderfully evil hair metal pretender, General Limewhite, who is voiced by none other than the metal god himself, Judas Priest Rob Halford. I should have known better than to hire guards whose hands are bigger than their brains. You're all fired. Every fat, worthless one of you. The story in Brutal Legend really is one of its biggest assets. Um, Jack Black's Eddie Riggs is, is very likeable um, and the world in which he inhabits is, is one of pure metal. Um, <laughs> all the quests have a metal theme, the storyline has a big sort of metal theme with the metal god and it's just all in all an absolute joy to play through. It does keep you going through all the missions, even when sometimes they do feel slightly repetitive you will consider yourself going back just because you want to see what happens with Eddie and his friends. So the story is a definite plus with this game. Brutal Legend is a funny old beast when it comes to its gameplay and possibly one of the contributing factors to why it wasn't so successful. The problem is that it tries to do many things yet fails to excel at any of the gameplay elements. You control Eddie from a third person perspective with his mystical axe in one hand and his flying V guitar in the other. Eddie can take on a lot of what the world throws at him through a variety of combos and special moves. You can find guitar solos which are dotted around the world on walls and you, their effects do vary between summoning your vehicle to melting off the faces of your foes. These are initiated by quick time button presses which are fairly easy to pull off. The only downside is that you have to do this every time you want to summon your ride and that gets old pretty quickly. Eddie can also team up with other characters to perform group attacks. My favourite of these is the mosh pit, where Eddie summons a bunch of headbangers around him into an unstoppable headbanging force, nutting their way through swarms of enemies. This would be all well and good if the game was a simple hack and slash. The combat is above average, but it doesn't do anything we haven't seen before. However, Brutal Legend isn't really about this. About a quarter of the way through the game you suddenly realise that you're playing an RTS. The various groups that you rescue or persuade to join your cause have a specific function, such as the Killmaster, who is voiced by the Metal Master Lemmy. Him and his gang are a bunch of healers. Uh, you also have headbangers who act like foot soldiers and rotchicks who provide artillery. These groups are used during the pivotal stage battles which occur throughout the game. The idea is to defend your stage whilst trying to take on that of your enemies. This is done by capturing various fishes, known as fan geezers, which appear in the ground. They contain the praise of fans which can then be used to convert into merchandise booths and deliver the tribute directly to your stage. This gives you more currency to get bigger and better units. It's all quite workable, but just like the combat it's a bit average. You are restricted to the view of Eddie, and this often hinders the gameplay. I imagine that these segments would have been a lot more enjoyable if Double Fine had allowed you to zoom in and out of the combat and look at the battle from a top-down perspective. Also, having to command multiple groups using the control pad is very cumbersome. You would think with the move to the PC things would have been a lot easier with the mouse, but you'd be wrong. This is mainly due to the fact that 
when conducting the battles, you also have to control Eddie, and trying to do this with a mouse and keyboard is a lesson in frustration due to the odd mappings. This feels like the biggest missed opportunity as far as this PC port is concerned. It was my number one complaint back when I played it on the Xbox in 2009, and it is my number one complaint here. The RTS sections are not as fun as they should be. It's a combination of poor design decisions which hold back the gamer from feeling as though they're totally in control. All good RTS games do this, but Brawl Legend does not. I found the most fun with the game outside the RTS elements and the main story combat sections. Don't get me wrong, the story is good, but the mechanics make it feel a bit of a chore at times rather than a pleasure. Instead, simply exploring the world, finding collectibles, and participating in a variety of mini-games was enough to warrant the purchase as far as I'm concerned. There are missions that see you delivering beer before it spoils to the parties on the beach. There are small self-contained combat missions which see you ambushing a bunch of glam metal gits, and there are various upgrades which you can make to your ride by gaining XP. This means that you have to visit one of the coolest cameo characters in the game, the Guardian of Metal, played by none other than Ozzy himself. Ozzy does a really good job with his voiceover here, and it's fantastic to hear his mumblings as you're going through the menu systems. This game really is the jack of all and master of none. It tries to do some pretty interesting things as far as an open world adventure game goes. The the code, I think really the console-fied controls are what hold it back. If this were just a PC-only title, then I think all of the combat mechanics would have been geared towards the mouse and keyboard, whereas here they're mapped in a very strange way and I would say pretty much unusable. If you're going to play this game, play it with a controller. But the real-time strategy elements would have really benefited from the precision that a mouse and keyboard offers. So we're not really getting that kind of PC enhanced experience aside from what I'm about to talk about, the graphics and sound. Like all Double Fine Productions, Brutal Legend has great production values, with the art style of the metal world being one of the game's true strengths. As you wander through the land you're treated to giant mountains made of anvils, spiders which can weave bass strings, and animals which are made out of collections of blades. All of this is presented in almost Pixar quality cartoon style. Facial animations on the main characters are very strong and impressive, with spot on voice syncing. Despite the game world looking like something out of the Dio album cover, there are plenty of colours and the game never looks dull as a result. The voice acting in the game is utterly superb. I was initially worried when I heard that Jack Black was going to be playing Eddie, as he has a tendency to chew the scenery. However, I was pleasantly surprised by his performance. It is often quite understated, more understated than you would expect. This allows the other voice talent to really shine, especially the three standout performances from Lemmy, Halford and Ozzy. Lemmy's character, the Killmaster, is simply oozes cool, and Ozzy's Guardian of Metal is one of the funniest and best performed in the game. Halford, as the sneering glam metal arsehole that is General Limewhite, is just has to be heard to be believed. The feeling that you get from all of this is that the voice actors within the game were really, really believing in what they were doing, and it, it really does show as a result. There are no half-assed performances throughout, and no character outstays their welcome. <laughs> Pushing me off for one. The graphics and sound are pretty strong in Brutal Legend, at least with the PC conversion. I remember playing it on the consoles when it was released, and it wasn't too shabby back then. But now, with the upscaled resolution and extra emphasis on HD textures, etc., etc., um, the game does shine a bit more. Um, but there are some um, graphical glitches that came up here and there when I was playing. For example, I remember there was one cutscene where um, one of the protagonists had a, a massive black stick just sort of shoved through their head going out into the middle of nowhere, which was really random and very off-putting. Um, but aside from that, um, the, extra, the extra texture work, the uh, screen space ambient inclusion that they use, and of course, obviously the anti-aliasing, um, do make the game look miles better than it was on the consoles when it was originally released. And 
it's they have put in a mild amount of effort here in the PC conversion. You've got to remember, Double Fine is quite a small studio, and um, you know, bigger studios should really take note that if Double Fine can do it, you can do it too. As far as PC ports go, Double Fine have put a bit of effort into the conversion from console to PC. There is of course a resolution jump, but Double Fine have also added a field of view and draw distance sliders. The impact of the extra draw distance isn't really all that apparent, although the geometry pop-in is significantly reduced. There are other options for depth of field, screen space ambient occlusion and V-Sync. However, there is no texture quality slider here. There isn't much of a problem as the texture work is clean and upgraded at least from the consoles with textures looking at far higher resolutions than what they were at before. This is aided by additional texture filtering. Every now and again you'll see a muddy texture but this can be easily forgiven in open world games. Considering that the original game on the PS3 operated at a sub HD resolution and the Xbox 720 was locked at 720p you get the feeling that Double Fine really wanted to show off their original vision for the game, unhampered by technological constraints. However, the increased performance as far as the visuals are concerned obviously comes at a price. On my gaming laptop, which has an i7 processor, 16GB of RAM and a 675M graphics card, I was able to play the game at 1080p with FX AA on and still sustain around a 50 frames to 60 frames a second mark. However, once I used the super sample and anti-aliasing solution that's on here, um, it, it did make the frame rate drop to around sort of 35 to 45. So that's worth bearing in mind. It is a very hard going AA solution, so um, I would advise not using it as the benefits aren't really that strong in a game like this. I did also try the game on an uh, integrated graphics solution which was my HD3000 from Intel which is part of my i7 chip. Also it's best to note that this is an i7 chip and obviously the performance will vary. However I did manage to get around 30 to 25 frames a second once I'd played with the um, field of view slider and the distance slider and also turned off um, all of the bells and whistles. It didn't look all that different to be honest with you and 25 to 30 frames a second is more than playable. Well, my verdict for Brutal Legend. The gamer inside of me, the one that's supposed to be objective and supposed to um, find the flaws in everything, says very much that this is a 3.5 out of 5 game. It's really let down by its control scheme. Some of the side missions can become quite repetitive. Um, after a while, and um, it's it just it feels like a missed opportunity as far as the PC is concerned to sort out the RTS elements, which really did bob down the original on the Xbox and PS3. However, the metaler inside of me, the guy who <laughs> you know went to Donington in 1996 to see Metallica play, and has loved metal ever since, he thinks this is a five out of five game through and through. Um, you've got to remember there's not a lot like this <laughs> out there and good old Tim Schafer he does come up with unique ideas and metal is quite niche as far as um, as far as video games are concerned. It's overall blood, gore, guts and over dramatic acting. It's never this sort of tongue-in-cheek celebration of the music which is what Brutal Metal, uh, <laughs> brutal, metal. <laughs> could be brutal Metal, Brutal Legend is. It's it's such a great game to play to see obviously the characters of Lemmy, Halford and Ozzy appear but also just go around the scenery seeing all this fantastic artwork which it really does look like something out of the Dio album cover, it's, it's fantastic and, and, and listen to some of your favourite metal tracks they've obviously done their research or somebody at Double Fun has got some really good taste in, in heavy metal because uh, there are very few tracks of which you'll be skipping over when you're uh, driving through the countryside. So, it's a bit, I can't give it two scores, I'd love to give it two scores, but I will give it a 3.5 out of 5. It's good, and if you haven't experienced it yet, it is at pretty much a budget price, so there's not much to uh, um, stop you there. 
but if you're into the genre, if you really like your metal music, particularly the old school, we're talking, you know, Priest and Diamond Head and uh, Bud even Budgie making an appearance in the soundtrack here, you're going to absolutely love this game through and through. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic to watch. And the way that it, it, it mocks metal in a way which isn't playing down to it, it isn't saying, you know, you're, you're, you're a completely worthless genre. It, it, it takes the mickey where it needs to take the mickey, but you don't ever, as a metal fan, you never feel offended by it. You're actually sitting there going, actually, yeah, we do, we do do that, and uh, I guess we do have a reputation for being this way. So, three out of five, unfortunately. I wish I could give it higher. The metal fan inside of me wants to give it a full five out of five. Um, but I can't. I've got to be objective here. And it is a brilliant effort by Double Fine. I really hope that they do do a sequel. I really do hope they do do a sequel. But I, I fear that I don't think they have the budget to do these type of games these days, Double Fine, since they became a, quite an independent um, production house. But we'll see. Anyway, I'm the Laptop Gamer, and I'll see you next time. No one shall kill Lion White this day but I.